Welcome back to the channel everyone. Thanks for clicking on my video today. So we're going to talk about the now bargainous super sport motorcycles of yesteryear. That particular year in question is 2004-2005, the mid 2000s, bit of a golden age of sports bikes. Today it's no secret that the high powered range stopping sports bikes from the major manufacturers are laden with electronic wizardry, whether it be traction control, ABS, anti-wheelie control, or whatever the manufacturers can program in there. Undoubtedly, these developments are needed for a 200 bhp, 200 mile an hour litre bike in 2021, but I can't help think there's an element of marketing and salesmanship behind all the technology. When I first started dreaming about sports bikes in the mid 2000s, there was next to no technology at all. And people will argue back and forth whether the trend is a positive development that keeps those of us who aren't professional race riders safe or if electronic interference is ruining the fun, it's unlikely most riders will be able to ride a one litre sports bike at its limits. Add to that, the performance of the litre bikes has changed incrementally over the years, meaning a 2005 blade is still gonna scare the pants off you at Warp Factor 9, just as much as the CBR 1000 RR, R, 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 R. So that begs the question, why would you buy a new one at 17K or you could buy a second-hand older generation bike for under 7k and sensibly put the 10k you've saved either in your back pocket, buy a new kitchen, take the missus on holiday or throw it all into Dogecoin if that's your thing. Today we're going to dive into the 1000cc super sports of the mid 2000s. So the first contender today is the Kawasaki ZX-10R. This bike debuted in 2004 as the C1H model. The engine is a 998cc inline 4, boasting a claimed 175bhp and 84.8 foot-pounds of torque. You can ring this bike out to 176 mile an hour given the opportunity. The bike weighs in at 170kg, meaning power to weight is just extreme. The Gen 110 has famously peaky power delivery concentrated in the top end and less low down grunt than its contemporaries. It's still a one litre sports bike, so it's not gonna be flat in the mid range. Uh, don't think it's a 600 or anything like that. Despite this light curb weight and twitchy power delivery, Kawasaki did not steering damper as standard until the later C2H model was released in 2005. So if you wanna pick up a Gen 110, you're gonna need 2,000 to 5,000 pounds, but get one soon as they are becoming desirable. The green and the blue are probably the best colors to get. They also do a graphite gray. Okay, so moving on, the CBR1000RR was Honda's first foray into the one litre class. They'd slowly increased the capacity of the previous fire blade incarnations over the years. So you had a, a 929 and 954, but by 2004 they released the 1000RR. And this motor is a 998cc liquid cooled inline, mated to a six speed box. Power output is claimed at 172 bhp and torque comes in at 84 foot-pounds, and this will push the blade to a knuckle-whitening 178.5 miles per hour. Now the Honda is everything that the Kawasaki is not. Smooth, predictable power delivery, relatively roomy ergos for a super sport, a predictable and stable ride thanks to a very clever electronic steering damper. It's the sensible man's choice. It's less hooligan and more refined. It's the man who picks the Alpina over the M3. This was the last of the blades fitted with a distinctive underseat exhaust. I expect to pay 2,000 to 4,500 for a nice example. The Repsol paint scheme actually commands a little bit more money. Okay, next up on our list is the offering from Team Blue and it's the Jixa 1000 K5 model re released in 2005. And for this bike, Suzuki really went to town refining the mill. They outfitted the 998cc inline four with a very light flywheel weight matched rods, pressure sensitive piston rings. And the result was a claimed 178 bhp and 87 torques, all corralled within a svelte 600-esque frame and only 166 kilos dry weight. This propelled the blue machine up to 178 miles an hour if you had the minerals for it. Reviews at the time lauded the Suzuki GSXR 1000 with having all of the user-friendly accessibility and the lateral power curve of the blade, combined with the buzz and excitement of the Kawasaki. It actually makes more power and torque than ZX-10R from 3,500 to 13,500 RPM. You'll be looking at an outlay 
of £5,200 for a mint example and it's really not worth buying a dog trying to put it right. Buy a good condition example and slowly and incrementally improve it if that's your thing. So the final offering from our quartet today is the Yamaha YZF R1 or known to all of us as the R1. And in 2005 R1 fans were treated to a radical redesign consisting of a Honda style underseat silencer, Ram air induction, radial front mounted calipers and a striking new fairing set. Oh and they also bumped up the output by 20 bhp and that didn't hurt either. This Yam is powered by a pre big bang motor so it's 147 bhp at the rear wheel delivered with the screaming shrillness of a traditional inline four. Even with the hiking performance, this R1 was roomy and comfortable, again for a super sport, had stunning looks and breathtaking performance. And you can pick up this bike today for a four and a half of your finest English pounds. What an absolute bargain. So there we have it, four dream machines. I wouldn't be disappointed with any of them. If it was me, and bear in mind I can't ride any of these bikes to their absolute limit, I'd probably choose the R1 or the Honda just for that sexy undersea exhaust. Well, thanks for watching the video today, guys. Really appreciate you joining us. And if you like the content, please do hit the like button. That really helps with the algorithm. And secondly, hit the subscribe button. Say subscribe and get notified when we drop new videos. That's all for today, guys. Thanks for joining, and I'll catch you in the next one.